Good evening, everybody. I'm Marty Olson, and welcome to another edition of City Focus. Uh, tonight, I'm uh, delighted to have a good friend of mine as a guest, uh, John Russell, who's uh, just uh, two days ago was installed as president of the Kiwanis Club of New London, of which we are both members. And tonight, I'd like to focus our program uh, on the Kiwanis Club and what we're doing. Uh, I think it's important that uh, for a vibrant community that we we all need to strive to give back. I think that's uh, important. We all can't be uh, takers. And I think the Kiwanis Club offers a wonderful uh, opportunity and conduit to do just that. Uh, for those of you who don't know John, uh, he was born in Philadelphia and the Navy brought him up into southeastern Connecticut. And uh, since he's been up here, he's uh, owned a restaurant, Russell's Ribs. He's uh, owned Louie's up on Broad Street, uh, ran for state rep. A number of years ago, in 2009, he ran for city council successfully, served a term, uh, one year as deputy mayor, and uh, ran uh, as an independent candidate a year ago for city council uh, unsuccessfully. But uh, John has also had a, a strong connection uh, trying to deal with issues regarding the homeless uh, in, in New London. And uh, I think that his breadth and scope and his capacity uh, to give back to the community goes without saying, and, and I'm really uh, delighted to have you in, John, and talk about a topic that both you and I, uh, we agree on just, <laughs> just about all the time. Uh, uh, and, and thank you for, for uh, taking uh, time out to, uh, to join me tonight. I'm delighted to be here, Marty, and I'm just really delighted and surprised when I got the phone call they asked me to, to be on so well uh, you know a few months ago I, <clears throat> I had Bill Donovan on and he's the at the time he was the president of the Lions. Northern Lions Club yeah. and uh, I'm hoping to get the president of the Newland Rotary Club on sometime uh, in the near future as well again there are many different uh, ways to to give back and I think that the uh, large service clubs of Rotary Lions and Kiwanis certainly represent those and uh, New London has all three of these organizations uh, in our community, and they're all doing, I think, you know, very, very good work. And there's some instances where there's common threads, but we also have very individual uh, identities, which I think is very important. Uh, before we get too far into the program, though, folks, I would like to uh, provide a public service announcement. Uh, the 12th annual Ocean Beach Park celebration will be held uh, Saturday, October 13th at the Port and Starboard uh, Banquet Hall at Ocean Beach Park. And it'll be from 6.30 to 11.30 in the <coughs> evening. Uh, music by the Cartels. And it's hosted by the SOB, Save Ocean Beach uh, Incorporated Nonprofit Organization, and celebrating the revival of Ocean Beach Park. And uh, the Save Ocean Beach Park group, I think, does marvelous work. And, and uh, I would encourage any and all to get out and support uh, this this event and the money goes directly back into the beach it's uh, very very good uh, tickets are $25 in advance $30 at the door and uh, for tickets you can send a check and a self-addressed stamped envelope to SOB Inc at PO Box 147 in New London or call SOB Inc at Ocean Beach uh, 860 Four four seven thirty thirty one extension one thirty two, or you can call Marie at eight six zero four four seven two five zero four, or Phyllis at eight six zero three eight nine two five six two, and that's and an event that I, I enjoy, and I, I know you do too. Well, Marty, what what the Save Ocean Beach crew has done over the years has just been absolutely phenomenal. I mean, they are very dedicated. I mean, every time you go down there, you see somebody from Save Ocean Beach down there doing, actually doing things. I mean, you can, you can, you can basically say that they rebuilt the entire Ocean Beach. I mean, the boardwalk, I think, was their project. I think they raised the money for, for it and a lot of their volunteer labor. I mean, that boardwalk, uh, people don't realize, was built, rebuilt completely in, in a South American wood called Epi, mm -hmm. which is really, really hard, hard wood. It'll last forever, but it's really hard to work with. I mean, it's not like a regular piece of wood you can just nail and nail into. You have to drill every single hole. So this was quite a labor of love, and, and it's a beautiful, beautiful job. Uh, 
so every time I go down there, I always see someone from Save Ocean Beach. So I have a real, you know, and I am a member of the organization too. So I'm, I will be there, and I'll have my dancing shoes on and ready to go. It's always a lot of fun. And for those of you, you know, the TV doesn't do <clears throat> John justice here, but uh, when he gets out on the dance floor, he's uh, <laughs> he's kind of like Fred Astaire there. He's twinkle toes. <laughs> <clears throat> and folks, uh, as noted on the screen, we are live this evening, so if you'd like to call up and, and uh, discuss things, uh, please do. Uh, locally, we're at 860-440-3154. Uh, if you're out of the area, you can call us at 1-800-253-2285. Um, why did you... Uh, Join Kiwanis, John. I mean, you, you you joined roughly six years ago in 2006, and uh, you, you need to be invited into the club. But uh, somebody must have thought that you would have been an asset, and you must have seen something within the organization that tugged at you that you uh, would make the commitment to not only join but to to stay and to and to serve. And this is your second stint to uh, stepping up to the plate as our club president. Well, back in it actually my. My stint with Kiwanis goes back to meeting Bob Grills. All right. Back in 2004, I ran into a fella in Waterford who's now the second selectman. His name is Paul Suprin, outside of the Waterford Pizza. Yep. And he says, you should run for state representative. I want you to meet this guy, Bob Grills. I said, whatever. OK, sure. So I met him and John Hunziger at the Lighthouse Inn when they were still open for a delightful lunch where they buttered me up and got me to run, um, you know, for state rep. Uh, I certainly didn't do that well, but I learned a lot. And, uh, and it is a learning experience. Yes, it is. But Robert, uh, Robert Grills, I've come to learn, is one of the most incredible guys I'd ever met. And he was involved with uh, Kiwanis. And uh, you know, like I said, I became a member in 2006. Well, he invited me to some Kiwanis meetings, and um, I really was taken with some of the things they, that Kiwanis does. So the one thing that really caught my eye, um, Kiwanis does things on a, on a local, on a regional, national, and global level. Well, globally at the time, in 2006, Kiwanis was partnered with uh, UNICEF on a program to eradicate iodine deficiency disorder. Um, Kiwanis was the fundraising arm of it. And uh, UNICEF was out there. You know, basically, this iodine deficiency was kind of a third world problem. Um, you know, and base, these people, they, they, these horrible, you know, they had horrible diseases from just missing iodine in their diet. So it's, it's the leading cause of a preventable mental retardation. <coughs> yeah. And, uh, as well as goiters and other yeah. other thyroid issues, and uh, and with a nickel's worth of iodized salt uh, is enough to, to eradicate, which is really a lot of value for your dollar. Yeah, and that was so. They're going. You know, so this is what drew me originally was this program, and uh, they, as I got involved in the club, all right, I morphed into being very interested in reading to kids. You know, at the, well, we still run, we run a program called Reading is Fundamental, which is, of course, a national program, and Kiwanis has adopted it, and we provide adult readers to several daycare centers in the area, and then I started researching about the importance of reading to children, getting children reading early, and how important it is to their lives and to this, the country, by extension. And I, I ran that program for five years. Um, so there's there's something for everyone in in the in the Qantas uh, in the Qantas group. Yeah, I mean when you think about our uh, our membership, and at the moment uh, the New Orleans Qantas Club has uh, 34 members, and uh, I think for a group our size we are extraordinarily active, and we have a lot to hang our hat on. Um, and, and in regards to the RIF program now. Uh, before you joined Kiwanis, um, I served as New England District Governor in the year 2000-2001, and our administrative year runs from October 1 through September 30. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, I made, as Governor, uh, RIF uh, our district project. I was encouraging clubs throughout New England 
to adopt RIF as a project for their clubs and to engage uh, preschoolers in reading uh, throughout New England. And, and many clubs did just that. So our club's been on board with this program basically since that time. Uh, Valida Grills took an initial uh, role trying to get our club engaged locally while I was out trotting around New England um, and did a very good job, I might add. Uh, but the benefit of, of the RIF program is, you know, we're promoting literacy and the joy of reading as well as the, the, and this may be more, most important for many of the children that we're serving because they all get books to bring home, is ownership. So, I mean, these three components to me are, are absolutely critical to success and, and we're providing this service uh, at Riverfront ch uh, Child Care over in Groton and uh, their constituency, which has a number of New London kids, uh, I think is uh, very, very important. Uh, and also uh, at Balestrini's uh, Child Care Services, and they have three uh, offices, one in Waterford and Salem and in East Lyme as well. Um, and I would like to give a plug for the program outside of Kiwanis, quite frankly, with the Drop-In Learning Center, which does a right. huge amount of uh, work with RIF uh, in New London and in, 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 the, in the region as well. And uh, it's important to get these kids off on the right, right foot. Well, you know, you, you talk about that, and, and, and I came from a different place. I mean, I had a mother who read to me, read, read my brother and I to sleep every night. And that instilled in me a joy of reading. I still read myself to sleep every night. And I can still remember Tom Swift and things, oh, Thomas Hardy, all those things that they read, my mom read to me. Well, these children don't have that experience. And oftentimes, I mean, it, it was absolutely enlightening to me the first time we gave out books some of these children had never had a book so it's a whole nother you know reality so that really brings it home to how important what what we're doing is I mean the literacy piece I mean joy of reading is one thing but the literacy piece I mean that we're, we're trying to help these kids get along in this world today and it's just marvelous to see their eyes open up and how excited. You feel like um, Art Linkletter or Bill Cosby rolled into one when you're, when you're reading to these kids because they come up and they jump on your lap. And I mean, it's just, I just can't describe it. Everyone who does it is touched by doing it. Absolutely. And, Everyone. Uh, and, and it's something that, uh, I mean, if you're interested in getting involved with a program of this nature, with the Kiwanis Club, I mean, we are a, a, a club that is encourages individuals in our greater New London community, we're regional, uh, to come and participate with us. I mean, we come from all walks of life, our membership, we've got people that are uh, in, in medicine, we've got people in business, we've got people that are, uh, work for the government, uh, so we have all different walks of life. We've got retired folks, accountants and uh, so I mean if you have a, a desire to give back the, the New London Kiwanis Club I think is a, a wonderful opportunity uh, to do that and uh, for the benefit of our viewers uh, why don't you kind of share when and where we meet and uh, perhaps uh, some of the uh, uh, expenses involved because I mean it's not free uh, to, to, to become a member so I'll well sure Marty uh, the club meets, we, we, meet, we meet weekly every Thursday at Mitchell College in the Clark Center, it's, which is right off the cafeteria uh, at noon. And meetings are informational as, as well as business. Uh, we have speakers from outside every, every week. Uh, we'll have the police chief one week, the mayor, uh, we'll have business leaders, we have judges, we have uh, people in, in the social work field, uh, anything you can possibly imagine. Uh, and it's very informative. You'll learn a lot about your community by going to these meetings. Uh, it also provides camaraderie for all the club members. Um, anyone is invited to come to a meeting. Uh, it doesn't cost anything to come uh, to a meeting. You get a free lunch out of the deal, too. And to see what Kiwanis is about, to see if it's something for you. 
uh, as Marty says, um, it is about giving back. I mean, none of us get paid, and uh, you know, it's it's all about service. Uh, to be a club member, uh, I believe, is a hundred and ten dollars a year. That's our annual dues, correct? And uh, you do not. I mean, we don't. We do not have real real stringent. Um, attendance requirements with Kiwanis uh, as Rotary does or others. You can, you can become a member of Kiwanis and just be interested in one program. We have a young lady uh, uh, now who has become a member and she just wants to run the RIF program or at least so far that's what she's interested in. So, well help me out here Marty. I think you're right. I mean one of the things that uh, as a for instance regarding the, the speaking programs, I mean this uh, Thursday we will be uh, being addressed by a woman named Alyssa Moody, who uh, works for uh, 94.9 uh, FM radio, uh, which uh, talk uh, news talk radio. It's a, a relatively uh, a new station. It's a, a it's the flagship CBS station affiliate. for Lee Elsie, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, so I have an opportunity to learn about this station and what they're doing, and and uh, I, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, uh, last. Uh, and Priscilla Peabody, I might add, is the program chair who has uh, invited this guest in to address the club. Uh, last month, uh, Erica Richardson, one of our new members, was the program chair for the month, and uh, she brought in a pretty dynamic group. Uh, we had a gal from the uh, Parks and Rec Division in the City of New London. Uh, uh, was that Sharon? Sharon Bosquet. Uh, yeah. Yep. And we also had State Rep Bernie Hewitt in. We had... Uh, uh, Chief Ackley, and I'm trying to remember there was a fourth one earlier in the month, but uh, uh, a benefit, that, and I think this is part of the strength of our club, is the uh, each month we try to get different club members to, to, to take a month and, and invite speakers in, mm -hmm. and we all have different interests and different contacts, so that you're not going to get uh, a year's worth of people in the sporting world or right. politicians or in the social service sector. Uh, it, it will reach and touch all different people and all different topics and it's a good opportunity uh, to learn about our community and what's going on. Um, also it, from time to time it gives the club an opportunity to be addressed by uh, an agency uh, that may need our assistance whether it be financial or perhaps hands-on and that happens from time to time and we also get folks that uh, address the club that we uh, uh, well, you know, we think are a good fit for us and we'll invite them to 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 join our group right partner with us yeah well even as members that we, we, we right. occasionally we get somebody who speaks to us that uh, jumps on board and becomes a you know an active member um, just a second can I get a little short pause here absolutely uh, I just want to uh, welcome, I mean, wish my father, Jack, he's home watching. Happy 91st birthday, Pop. Uh, Told you I'd say hi to you on TV. Happy 91st birthday, Pop. Anyway, and I had that in my notes as well. Did you? So, so uh, Jack, a happy birthday. And uh, actually, his birthday was on Saturday. Was right. that correct? And uh, mm -hmm. uh, it was nice to stop over the house and wish Jack a happy birthday and uh, a little cake and ice cream and a... Uh, uh, I gather on, on Sunday he had three parties, so he's quite the party <laughs> animal there. <Yeah. laughs> and, and also a member of our club. That's right, he is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and believe me, he asks every Thursday morning, are we going to Kiwanis today? And one of our club members, Rich Cheatham, brought him back a, uh, a pin, Sheriff of Kiwanis, and he wears it proudly on his hat, his retired U.S. Navy hat. He every wears day. it very proudly yeah. every day, yes he does. So that's good. Okay, and folks, again, I want to remind you that uh, we're live this evening, and if you'd like to uh, give us a buzz, we'd certainly be uh, uh, delighted to hear from you uh, at eight six zero four four zero three one five four or at eight hundred two five three twenty two eighty five. We're discussing Kiwanis and community service tonight, so uh, uh, please give us a buzz. Okay. <clears throat> Well, John, you would like to discuss uh, some of the tenets of, of Kiwanis. Uh, we've got a, uh, you know, a lot of people you know, ask us, who are you guys and what do you do? Right. 
And uh, in a sentence, uh, Kiwanis International's adopted a. Uh, actually, we got a call. Want to go? Let's go take right a ahead. Call. Sure. Good evening, and you're on the air. Good evening, guys. Dennis from New London. How you doing, Dennis? Good. Um, I was. Uh, oh God, I think I'm having a singing moment. <laughs> um, I had a question for you guys. It just went out my head. This ain't right. Take, uh, relax. We're, we're your pals and, and regroup here. Take, <laughs> take, 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 take I, I just heard uh, John talking about running for a higher up office in the city, which uh, would be interesting. Uh, I didn't catch whether he said he was going to do it or not. Um, Actually, he said that he, he did do it a number of years ago. Oh, oh, okay. Um, 2004. Oh, I know what it was. Um, at the council meeting last night, they were talking around um, doing audits, and then I see in the paper today that they're talking about auditing uh, certain departments and stuff. And I'm just kind of curious on your take on that. You think that would would be sufficient, or do you think we need a more um, involved audit? Uh, at a personal level, uh, I don't think what's being proposed will hurt anything. Uh, it is the operational audit. Uh, is, is, is appropriate for the type of information you're looking for. Uh, one thing that I think has confused people is when they've tossed around the word forensic audit, which is really uh, not the correct term. I mean, that's something if you're looking for malfeasance, fraud, uh, and I don't really see anything of that nature going on in the city. I mean, I don't know if you do, but I really don't. Uh, in the past or currently, um, but the operational audit is designed to uh, get a more intense look at the individual departments and perhaps see how they are operating and functioning and if there's areas where uh, perhaps improvements can be made uh, by evaluating their, their, uh, their books via the accountants. Um, yeah, I, I, Dennis, just to jump on back of Marty here, uh, you know, I look at it this way. All right, we're, we're a city that has had eight finance directors in 10 years. And accounting is accounting, but every person does, like I do my books different than Marty. Well, every finance director came in, did some things differently. And, and it, it's just human nature that things are going to get bollocked up when you do not have a continuity, especially when you're dealing with an $80 million budget and you don't yeah, have I can continuity. See that. You know, it's just. I mean, they're going to spend thirty-one thousand five hundred dollars, I guess, to do this audit. I saw, and yeah. uh, I mean, I can tell you the answer right now. We overestimated revenues, and every year, I mean, it was almost a standard. You knew that the fire fire department was going to be about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars over budget. You knew it every year. Uh, the, you know, so I don't know what we're spending this money for. Personally, I mean, Marty and I always disagree, so this doesn't. This is no, no, no excuse, no, no difference. But uh, I don't know what it's going to do for us in the end, um, except spend thirty-one thousand five hundred dollars. I mean, well, we're real good at that. And I and I just believe right now that uh, this new administration, everybody watching, everybody as close as they are, I think they're going to stay within their budget, and uh, I do not see it going outside of the budget. So. Yeah, you can go and spend this money if you want to, but I, I, I'm a little unsure if, if it's going to have a benefit or not for us. Okay, it, there was it, another it, article the other day about uh, parking lots and stuff. Uh, um, Kristen going for a $500,000 grant, uh, except the uh, parking lots and all that stuff. But then as I was reading the comments, somebody had wrote in that the $500,000 grant was just money for a feasible study. Now, do either one of these you know if the money's meant to actually do the work or is it meant to do a survey or? Well, I, all I know, Dennis, is what was in the newspaper. I have no other inside information on this particular topic. Uh, but based upon what I've read in the paper, uh, which is published public information, mm -hmm. Uh, is that the, the, uh, through the development office they are applying for this grant. I know, but is the money going to be actually used to do the work, or is it just... I, I, I honestly didn't glean uh, precisely what is going to be 
done with that? If it's going to be used for application or for feasibility? Uh, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I we don't just know. went through I, this not that long ago with that whole parking lot and the parking meters and all that. Well, we had the Hyatt Palma study, which was done last term, which was reported back to us, and parking was one of the issues that was addressed, uh, as well as some of the, the traffic patterns. Uh, but in order to do anything of any significance uh, in that area, uh, not the parking lots, but traffic patterns will require engineering uh, by state. The state will require that. Yeah, they'd have to yeah. change because if you want to change these roads to one way, and, or two way in this case, uh, yeah, it would require state. And that would require, uh, you know, engineering studies uh, above and beyond what we're talking about here. And Dennis, I can't give you any other information. I don't know anything more than Marty does on this issue, since we're right. not we're not involved, you know, in the in the day to day anymore. We just pick up things here and there. Um, oh, you know, that, so I that can't help you with coming that. again. Not that far off. <laughs> Another year, Dennis. I'll leave, I'll leave it at that because I got to run. All okay. right, thank you. Thank you All for right, the call. Bye. I guess you can't get can't get away from politics even when the show is not about politics. Well, but, that's okay. I mean, yeah, that's I all right. I like Dennis. He's all right. I appreciate right. the yeah. call, and yeah. uh, I wish uh, more people in the community were as as genuinely enthused and concerned and about our community Dennis. as Dennis is. Yes, that's, I agree with you. Agree with you. <clears throat> okay. Um, well, we're dis we're discussing uh, the New London Kiwanis Club, and uh, John uh, has recently uh, been installed just a couple of days ago as president of the the club uh, for another year and uh, we were discussing you know why you joined the Kiwanis and uh, um, you know and we have some uh, like I say our defining statement and our objects and perhaps you, you might want to uh, review these topics and perhaps how they apply uh, to why you joined and why you maintain your membership what are we doing uh, that uh, has reached out and tugged at you. Uh. Well, you know, at the installation dinner, the governor came. And the governor uh, was able to recite the objects of Kiwanis without referring to notes. Better man than I am, and I'm... And <laughs> I was, I mean, it, I, I'm just going to read a little bit to, to, to everyone right now, but this is, this is, this will show you in a nutshell because this, I was just talking to Marty about this. These objects and, and the statement and the mission are what the people in this club are about, which is just wonderful. I mean, the people who team, tend to be drawn to Kiwanis are really people that, that care a lot about their communities and their worlds. Yeah, but before you do that, I would just like to point out that the objects of Kiwanis were adopted uh, in 1924 at the International Convention in Denver. And, and they have never been Modified. changed. So they, what was approved then has uh, stood the test of time and continues to. And often you get, when you tell someone that you're a member of Kiwanis, well, what's Kiwanis? What is it? You know, it's like lions. People know right away eyesight and, and rotary, of course, is, is very. But Kiwanis seems to be, you know, one that people oft times have not heard of. So... You know, I, I picked this page up and I said, okay, well, here's Kiwanis' defining statement. Kiwanis is a global organization of volunteers dedicated to changing the world one child and one community at a time. And in a sentence, I think that speaks volumes. And that's what we are about. I mean, we, that's, it's just amazing. Their mission, serve the children of the world. Their motto is we build. I mean, what can you say? I mean, that, that is... Well, one of the things that I, I really appreciate about Kiwanis is that although we have a central theme of serving children, each individual Kiwanis club throughout the world has the autonomy to meet local community needs, whatever they may be, whether it's children, elderly, uh, the lonely, uh, handicapped, whatever that need may be. And the needs here in New London are quite frankly going to be different than they are in let's say Greenwich, Connecticut, mm -hmm. which has a club, or Westport. Westport. You know, but then again, uh, Hartford has a club, 
and New Britain and New Haven. So, I mean, just here in, in Connecticut as examples, and the, the communities are, much, are very different. Economic makeup, racial makeup, uh, population and size, area, uh, and it's important that to reach out and serve the community that, that you're in, and, and, and there's so many ways to do that. And uh, you mentioned the objects of Kiwanis, and there are six of them, and perhaps that may help shed some light as to uh, what people are, are, are being asked to kind of buy into. Yes, I, I would like to read that. Objects of Kiwanis. Um, first object, to give primacy to the human and spiritual rather than to the material values of life. S to encourage the daily living of the golden rule in all human relationships. To promote the adoption and application of higher social, business, and professional standards. To develop by precept and example a more intelligent, aggressive, and serviceable citizenship. To provide through Kiwanis Clubs a practical means to form enduring friendships, to render altruistic service, and to build better communities. And lastly, to cooperate in creating and maintaining that sound public opinion and high idealism which make possible the increase of righteousness, justice, patriotism, and goodwill. And once again, I just want to, I want to remark, adopted at the 1924 International Convention in Denver and totally applicable today. Yeah, and uh, you know, for me, and, and I've been at this now 25, 25 years, years uh, and to stick with something for 25 years, uh, it, you've got to be deriving some sort of value and benefit. And I, I find my association with this organization to be uh, extraordinary. And one of the objects that I have uh, uh, really taken a tremendous amount from is those enduring friendships. And not just in the Kiwanis Club of New London, of which basically everybody in the club is my friend, mm -hmm. but the people that I have met at different levels of Kiwanis basically throughout the world. It's been fabulous. And we've got a call. Good evening, and you're on the air. Marty? Yes, good evening. I'm calling for two things. The yes. first one is I am familiar with the Kiwanis. I want to wish John good luck his second time around. Thank you. Like Jack John, my John is watching you now. Mm -hmm. And I also want to thank you for uh, announcing the fundraiser for Save Ocean Beach. It is our only big fundraiser. It's what enables us to do the things that we do, like a playground, a water park, the boardwalk, the nature walk, all the bathrooms. And the tickets are on sale, and we hope we hope lots of people come because the beach is the, the gem of New London. And thank you for doing that. Good night. Thank you very much for the call, and it's a pleasure to uh, promote that. And we'll give the uh, event a plug next week as well. <clears throat> Got another fan out there, John. I'm telling you. Well, well, I, I mentioned uh, I mentioned her husband earlier today as one of the one of the actual convoluted ways that I became a member of Kiwanis. Yeah. Well, she and her husband are very active yeah. in the SLB group. I know. <coughs> and neighbors of mine uh, on Gardner Avenue. Yes. <laughs> um, but as I was saying, that uh, these enduring friendships. You know, one of the things that uh, Kiwanis <coughs> offers. Uh, is the opportunity to what we call interclub, which is basically visiting other other Qantas clubs. Uh, in in our area in uh, Southern Connecticut, uh, we're in a group uh, that includes the Qantas clubs in New Haven, uh, Cheshire, Wallingford, Guilford, uh, Newington, and Glastonbury. And uh, so when we visit these clubs, and if we're able to visit them within a fixed time period, it qualifies our club for recognition in our district convention, uh, which is kind of neat. And uh, 
but when you visit these clubs, you make friends. You meet people, and you'll when you they'll come and visit us, or we'll go and see them from time to time. That uh, you'll look forward to seeing these people, or maybe you'll see them at other other functions, maybe at other clubs or at district functions. We do have a district training conference every year uh, in the fall, and one will be coming up in mid-November in uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, uh, which is our governor, uh, Frank Dennett's home area, uh, Elliott, Maine, in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, uh, where all the clubs in New England have an opportunity to congregate and uh, compare notes and, and train and enjoy the fellowship and camaraderie of Kiwanis. Uh, our international convention this uh, coming administrative year will be in late June in Vancouver, British Columbia. So that's nice. pretty exciting for those who are able to, uh, to make that. Uh, I've had the privilege and pleasure of uh, attending about 10 conventions, uh, international conventions over the course of time, and uh, I find them to be uh, uh, extraordinarily positive experiences. Uh, Perhaps you can delve into some of the things now that you're going to be taking the helm that are on your agenda that, you know, what are you hoping to accomplish this year that uh, uh, beyond uh, what we've talked about already? I mean, we, there's so many uh, different things. We have a, you know, a, a new worldwide service project. We delved into the IDD program, but Kiwanis International's got a, a new uh, global initiative. We've got our district initiative, and I, I know you've got uh, a variety of things here in the home home base that you'd like to uh, uh, grab a hold of as well. Thanks, Marty. Uh, our gl our global initiative now we've also, we've partnered once again with UNICEF, and it's called Project Eliminate, and its mission is to wipe out neonatal tetanus. Neonatal tetanus is a horrible deadly disease that attacks mostly mothers and, and newborn infants in third world countries where you know sanitation is non-existent. It can be it can be eradicated with a dollar eighty worth of injections, inoculations. So um, my, our club is going to take it on basically as a fundraising thing. And just the other night at the installation my president-elect, Lynn Farrell, uh, who is very motivated with this program, um, just put, just held up her hand and said, you know, I got $100 for Project Eliminate, and within five minutes we raised $425 for Project Eliminate. So that's going to be something that uh, we're going to do um, this, this term. That's one thing that I, you know, I have found when I discuss Kiwanis with uh, the public at large as we were discussing earlier, who are you guys and what do you do? Uh, when we discuss these global initiatives, whether it's the IDD program or now the uh, Maternal Neonatal Tetanus uh, Eliminate Project, people, I think, are impressed that as an organization that we're willing to take on a global project. And the fact that we collaborate and partner with UNICEF. I mean, we raise the money. Uh, this project globally, I think our commitments uh, well over a hundred million dollars, mm -hmm. um, and then UNICEF will administer the program. I mean, they've got the connections to enter the countries and with the governments and things of that nature. Um, but we provide the, the the funding to make all this work, and it's a, it, to me it's a very exciting and it's a positive reason to belong. Um, I just want to take a step back with the IDD program. I mean our. Uh, honorary chairman of that program years ago was uh, Roger Moore, I mean James Bond. Right. So the fact that we had a guy of his stature uh, willing to step up in that capacity publicly I think speaks volumes of the positive nature of what we're trying to do. <clears throat> I agree with you Marty and, and you know it's funny because we can go right from the global initiative right down to a local initiative. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we're, our club is really proud of, uh, with only 34 members strong, is that we actually have leadership clubs in, high, in local high schools. We have six now, I think? Five. Five. We have leadership clubs in five high schools. They're called key clubs. And I mean, these are the kind of things that we're about. I mean, these kids, we're, we're teaching them good leadership uh, principles. 
Yep. The kids are learning that, uh, to give back, uh, which we discussed at the top, the, the absolute importance of uh, providing community service to their schools and the community. And uh, we have uh, Key Clubs, which is an acronym, K-E-Y, of Kiwanis Educating Youth uh, at Ledger High School, Fitch, Montville, uh, Waterford, and East Lyme. Uh, we have had clubs at uh, New London, which we've recently, uh, uh, we need to get in there and get that reestablished, but we have lost that uh, club, uh, I'm hoping temporarily. Uh, we also had a club at the Lime Old Lime High School, but they have consolidated uh, three service club, uh, uh, th clubs of that nature into one, one club at, at Lime Old Lime. And without the identity of Key Club, it made it difficult to sustain. Um, but these kids have a similar structure as Kiwanis clubs. They've got presidents, and they've got officers, they've got service projects that's student-driven. It's important that they have a, a good faculty advisor to kind of keep a, an eye on things, make sure that they don't uh, uh, step on their toes. And also, it's uh, very important for the Kiwanis club itself to uh, provide a liaison from our club to these uh, high schools as well so that we can have that uh, line of communication open as That's well. That's correct. Because we have programs, especially during the holiday season with the Salvation Army, uh, where our, uh, we, we, we work with uh, some of the things I think we'd have a difficult time <laughs> accomplishing uh, without the assistance of our key clubs. Uh, well, one of the things, as you know, Marty, is we do, we assist the Salvation Army in bell ringing the Saturday, usually the Saturday before Christmas. Our key clubs come out and we're at the Crystal Mall and we're outside. <laughs> so we provide, we're basically the adult, we're there, and, and the kids, it's, you know, it's a good thing that they're helping us because it's cold. Well, it can be cold, but the kids have a ball. Oh, well, they do. Uh, and for those who come back, uh, they remember they were in a very positive way what they're doing. Um, the, the club also provides a, uh, a Christmas party for the uh, youth program with the Army, which, uh, the last few years, uh, and again, this is a, our, our membership, how, how it extends beyond Mitchell College, is that, uh, I mean, Jim Sylvester, who was the, uh, runs the Alumni Association, uh, he's able to secure the Officers Club. So we have that party at the O Club, at the Academy, mm -hmm. uh, which is really a special place, and to get some of these kids coming from uh, uh, humble environments, uh, onto the academy and into the O Club, and uh, Santa Claus appears. Uh, club members, this is Claus. Uh, club members uh, adopt uh, different children and provide gifts, and it's a really a a, a special special program. Um, and also in Thanksgiving time, we provide a, a dinner down at the Army, where we normally are serving about 100 to 125 20, meals. Yeah. Uh, for some of our less fortunate neighbors uh, in New London. And that's just with the, with the Salvation yeah. Army. I mean, and it, Kiwanis also, uh, one of the things that they do is Kiwanis has an endowment we've built up over the years. And with the income from that endowment, what that throws off is we are able to give scholarships to worthy students, uh, which started out, I think, very modestly with a couple hundred bucks uh, Years gone by, and we're and, up to. And, and, and many years ago, quite frankly, we didn't know, you know, would offer a scholarship. We'd be scratching our backs of how we're going to pay for it. Uh, we didn't have that endowment uh, locally, and yeah. and, uh, uh, and now it's managed by uh, Glenn Handler at UBS, and uh, uh, <coughs> who works in that in that trade, and uh, its value is well over a hundred thousand dollars now. Yeah, and the income that that throws off, we're, like I said, we we write a couple of decent sized checks to students. Uh, we, have a, we have a whole committee, a scholarship evaluation committee that looks, uh, the local guidance counselors funnel in uh, different uh, applications for, for us to look at. We'll get maybe 50, 60 applications for these, uh, for these scholarships. And we're looking this year, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be happy to say we might either, might either increase the amount of the two scholarships we're giving right now or add a third scholarship. Yeah. In recent years, we've been giving out two, three thousand yeah. dollar scholarships, right. and the criteria has been based on academic performance, uh, extracurriculars, uh, need, and uh, things of that that nature that are evaluated. And 
often we are, and, and this is what warms our hearts, is that we're, we're often our scholarship uh, award recipients are kids that uh, uh, it may make a difference between them going or not going to yeah. college. And I think that's critically important. There are some kids who just seem to, uh, they're you know, the best and the brightest, and they seem to reap all the rewards. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not necessarily looking for that particular type of student. We're looking for... For that kid, you know, that, that need aspect is, is important. One of the other things I want to touch on before we run out of time is suppose you're sitting out there right now and you're, and you're watching us and you are involved in some type of civic or nonprofit organization and you're trying to run programs for kids and, and you need some help. Well, Kiwanis is there for you. We have an online application that you can fill out at newlondonkiwanis.org. newlondonkiwanis.org, of course, and request that. And we get requests all the time, Neighborhood Alliance, we get requests from, a lot, I can't even remember them, I mean, we get several a month. Uh, and we give to most of the ones if they make sense to us, if the board directors makes a decision. Most recently, um, we just added heavy hitters as, as one of our lists. Uh, Kent Ward's been running a program for kids down there for forever. Uh, we donate to the homeless. We, we, we do a lot of different things like that. So if you're listening right now and you've got to, say you're a den mother or, or a Cub Scout leader or, or whatever, and you, know, you're, you need some, a few bucks to do some things, go online, fill out the form, and we'll see if we can help you. Well stated. And... Uh Kind of a, a, an area where we recently got involved financially, but as well as with hands-on. And I want to make it you know, important, I think, that people recognize that a lot of what we do is, is hands-on. It's just not, we're not a check-writing club right. exclusively. Uh, where we uh, purchased, uh, I think it was about 75 bike helmets uh, that were uh, donated to the bike program that was run down at the pier, uh, Barbara Neff, uh, mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago. Uh, but we also had, a, you know, yourself and Rich Cheatham uh, were down there uh, volunteering. Yeah, fitting helmets. Uh, for, for, for that program. So that was a hands-on project as well as one where we made a, a contribution to it as well. So, I mean, there's different types of opportunities to, to, to give back. Okay. About a five-minute morning. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Okay, and, and we, we're involved in other things in the community, too. Uh, this past year, our, our club president, uh, Commander Andrew Ely, who is a uh, uh, professor of ethics at the, uh, at the Coast Guard Academy and, and a, obviously a Coast Guard officer. Former uh, CEO of the uh, New London Station. Former CEO of the New London Station, correct, and, and uh, advisor to the class of 2015. They took it upon themselves as a class uh, project to completely restore, there's a, a basketball court on Crystal Avenue, uh, right across the street from the transfer station, underneath the bridge, sort of. It's part of the Winthrop High Rise yeah. uh, pro yeah. uh, project. And, uh, you know, it, it was amazing. Uh, I go up that road a lot. I never even knew there was a basketball court there. I mean, it was so overgrown. There were trees growing up through the middle of it. It was amazing. So he brought it to Kwan as he talked to us, and we said, yeah, we'll, we'll work with you. Well, the day that we, we, we started this, we, we showed up, the Kiwanis and, 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 the, and the people from the, from the projects and, and, and the it was, it Coast Guard people. Salvation Army. It was, there a was over a couple hundred people there. Wonderful community project. Oh, it was just, I mean, when you saw it was finished, it was just, it was just unbelievable. And it's being used. Yeah. There are lights up there. They have a handball court. They got two, two, or, two or four basketball courts. I mean, it just makes you feel good to get involved with something like that that, that that you can use. You know, we do stuff we do stuff like that all the time. So we sponsor little league teams. Have for years the yeah. Kiwis. Yeah. And and folks, I you know, talking to John before we came on the air, he seemed reluctant to discuss uh, uh, some of our fundraising. But I, I think it's important that you recognize that uh, you know, some of the things that we do require us to. Uh, go out into the community to raise money to give back to the community. And that's a key component, that w what we raise in the community, in fact, does go back into the community to support the programs that we're discussing this evening. 
And our primary fundraiser has been an annual golf tournament, which uh, has been held at Shunakasset the last number of years. And we've been raising uh, usually between ten to $14,000 each year on that. And so that's something if you're a golfer uh, or you'd like to help out on that in the spring, uh, we'd certainly encourage your, your participation in any, any way, shape, or form. Or sponsor a tee, or, or just come out on game day and, and, and help out uh, as needed. Or if you're a golfer, come on out and uh, hit them long and hit them straight. <laughs> <laughs> not, not the way I hit them. <laughs> but we have fun. We do have fun. I, you know, I just want to extend a, a personal invitation for myself and Marty to come to a meeting at Mitchell College noon on Thursdays and just see for yourself what Qantas is all about. Meet some of the people, see if it's something you might uh, like to be involved with. It's, it's a very nice organization with great people. And even though we're only 34 strong, we, we do an amazing amount of great things for the community. Yeah. And we wouldn't mind being 40 or 50 strong. So no. we're not capped at 34. That's just uh, <laughs> where we are today. Uh, and you know, another program that we have done over the last handful of years I think very, very successfully, I might add, is an annual honor program where we uh, find somebody uh, in the community who we feel is so deserving to be recognized. And, mm -hmm. and recent uh, recipients have been uh, Chris Vallis and John Kashansky, who uh, at the time of their recognition were both 50 years members of our club. Wow. And, uh, and at the time, both with 50 years of perfect attendance, uh, we've recognized Yuli Bayona uh, in the Taino Boxing Club, when you mentioned Kent Ward, I think right. it's important that the, these boxing clubs and how they're getting these kids on the straight and narrow uh, is good, good work. Uh, Bob and Vlita Grills for their lifetime uh, of giving back in community services. John was recognized for his work with the homeless. Uh, Sally Ryan, our city historian, uh, and, and this most recently uh, last year, Steve and Gene Siegel uh, with the Guard Arts Center and the wonderful work that they're doing. Uh, so we're trying to reach out into the community and let people know uh, who we are and, and also uh, to connect important people who are giving back also and letting them know that they're being recognized for their good work. I mean, we're not on an island. We're certainly uh, uh, part of a much bigger picture. And folks, it looks like we're uh, getting down to our... Uh, Last couple of seconds here. John, anything you'd like to offer in closing here? It's been a really great hour here to yeah, have Yeah, it's been great. I, I, and I, I, I just really ask anyone out there who would be interested in giving back, who's been looking for something to do to help their community, um, come out and give us a look. Give us a shot because we do a lot of good things. Well, folks, I want to thank you for uh, watching and tuning in. Those of you called, thank you very much. I uh, look forward to seeing you next week on Tuesday at 6 o'clock here with City Focus. And I'm uh, Marty Olson. I want to thank John for coming in. All right, and, Marty. Uh, good night. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.